scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. One of such people that will be worthy of our study very briefly tonight is the man Moses. Moses had the destiny of a deliverer. But then we see that Moses had a very disturbing childhood. There are many others that would touch. But Moses was a very interesting personality. If you have the bad circumstances of Moses, you should have a justification to live a useless life. A child who was born and then thrown in a basket by the mother what kind of upbringing or what kind of birth experience is more humiliating than that do you know what it meant for the mother to just keep him in a basket and then in a river and say lord this is this one came from you i hand him over to you and then that is the end of imagine as an adult someone walks up to you and says god wants to use you but let me tell you a little story about how you were born. One day, there was a river somewhere around Ibadan. We just saw a basket that looked like a bomb. And we opened it and found you inside. You will first want to find out who your parents are. And go and meet them and say, so this is, this is. And then Moses is found and taken to Egypt. And Moses was being trained to be the next pharaoh because pharaoh's daughter loved him so much and yet moses would get to a point where the cry of destiny began to ring in his heart do you know the life of moses is very interesting because even if he didn't serve god from an ex standpoint he still would have been a success he still subjected himself to the principles that will make any man succeed under egypt he would have been properly mentored the only thing is that he would not serve destiny from a kingdom standpoint. He was going to be the next Pharaoh. And one thing led to the other, killed an Egyptian and he decided to take that risk with his destiny and run away. Was at the backside of the mountain for 40 years. You know what it meant for Moses to give up the royalty and the honor, that status in Egypt? And then one time, an encounter came to his life and shifted him to another dimension. To cut the long story short, that young boy who was pushed in that basket had the destiny of delivering the people. Oh my God, who knows that someone who is sitting here right now, regardless, I don't care the story around your life only god knows what has been written he said lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written as it is written please sit down i want you to please pay attention there are three seasons as far as your faith adventure and the adventure of destiny fulfillment is concerned there are three major seasons that must be captured in your life. Let me, just, let me just jump there for the sake of time. There are three major seasons in your journey of faith, 
in your faith adventure as far as fulfilling the purposes of God for your life is concerned there are three major seasons that I want you to learn listen if you miss any of this season except by the mercy of God you can be sure you will abort destiny are you ready the first phase and the first season of any man's life is called the season of preparation the season of preparation there is nobody who becomes mighty by default there is nobody who becomes mighty just by wishing you must pass through the first path and the first season that befalls all men whether you utilize it or not and you see all the seasons of a man's life are time dependent that means for any time you waste time you are wasting the unit of destiny listen very carefully the season of preparation there are five things that God expects to happen to you within this season and if those five things do not happen in that season it cannot qualify you for your next season is someone learning already the season of preparation you want to be great you want to be mighty through God you want to do much for the kingdom within your lifetime pay attention to your season of preparation there are five things that must happen to you within this season number one very quickly you must discover God your season of preparation is your moment of encounter listen most people today want to live a great life and all they are looking for is the name of the ministry this is not how we started the protocol of greatness is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God everybody say it in the beginning not fame in the beginning not a name in the beginning not power in the beginning not rema if you violate this protocol you are going to destroy your life there is no great man who started with the desire to be great in the beginning god this is the first message that must be restored especially to the generation coming for many in the beginning power for many in the beginning titles for many in the beginning platform and the name of ministry for many in the beginning cac registration when we started with god it was a blind passion for the things of god we did not even know ourselves some of us came from families where by 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 our biological whatever it is we did not even know that we had much your season of preparation is the time to press into God you heard what they were saying here passion for God how does a student come into class and then puts his ego down and stands before people and talks about Jesus very boldly in the beginning God in your season of preparation that is the time where you discover God Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people that do know they are God your season of preparation is the season where God must move from being your pastor's God to being your God he must move from being your mentor's God to your God is the season of a personal revelation thank God for the leverage of what somebody told you about God but you have to now know him Lord reveal yourself to me because when you stand before Pharaoh he will ask you who sent you Pharaoh is not just you can't bring a rod and stand before Pharaoh and say Pharaoh God sent me say which one and you'll be surprised that you yourself you say I don't know are there many I never knew there were many There are many people today who have started ministries respectfully speaking who have started all kinds of things and then when the attacks and the vicissitudes of life confront them 
that is Pharaoh saying, who sent you? They stand in shock and in frustration. I didn't answer that question before I started. But the people who know their God. You are my God. You are my God. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. Ah. For you are my God. You are my God. Listen, can I tell you? I wish I can tell you you will not stand before mountains and valleys in your life as anybody who has been mightily used by God. We do not know the mountains and the valleys that stand before you from where you are to where you need to go. Your confidence is not any signature or any uncle signs for you. It is the God that you know. How will your bills come? The God that you know. How will the members come? The God that you know. How will you survive your name being taken to shrines? The God that you know. How are you sure that the naysayers against your life will... Ah! He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my eyes. He says, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen very carefully. God is speaking to you tonight. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. Because you were my God. Shalabaka sobrande gelakatosia. You were my God. Can I tell you, every great man you see today, nobody gave them any guarantee. Don't you think somebody said, Come, I will give you land? Don't you think somebody said, Come, I will give you members? We live in a generation of people who do not know God. Clamoring for guarantees. Can you stand by me as I start ministry? There are people who enter the campus carrying only one box. Where their school fees of the next session will come from, they did not know. Blind faith, obedience. Please listen very carefully. Some of you, God is shaking away this auxiliary scientific faith that does not produce results. Please sit down. I think you should work on something, maybe media, something is playing in the background. So season of preparation, number one, you discover God. Let me tell you this, when you start your journey, and this is the advantage of the campus, aside from the privilege to learn, the campus is a platform that gives you the liberty to know God. There are many families because of their biases as to certain aspects of the kingdom, they may not give you the liberty to worship and pray and do night vigil. So God uses the disguise of your academic pursuit and plants you in an atmosphere that gives you the privilege you may never get at home. There are many people who will not be here if they were in their homes. The parents will not agree. Some by five o'clock, six, no matter how old you are, once you are under that covering, you must be home. So he gave you admission. Even though you were not qualified, you still don't know why the admission still came. It is a time to know God. Unfortunately, the devil too is waiting for you at the gate of the campus. 
as soon as you arrive it would distract you with all kinds of things can i tell you ask any most of the people you celebrate today their their season of preparation started they utilize their moments on campus there is no great man who god used mightily that had the privilege of passing through a campus who cannot show you their places of prayer their points of prayer their points of fasting moments where you prayed moments where you fasted no money but you fasted or you carried everything and gave it away and it will look as if you are irresponsible let me tell you the truth our love for god was vetted by the purity of our pursuit when i started working with god i never knew that they used to give a man of god honorarium that you preach and you count 10 naira Believe me when I tell you, to know that you preach and you actually put an envelope, I probably will run away. Knowing God vets the purity, it, it, it reaffirms the purity of your desire. Because if God does not do that hard check, let me tell you, by the time the glamour of success comes, you will not last. Is the reason why many today, their first car, is the window that leads them to perdition their first international ministry is what dries up their prayer life because they did not stay with god to love him and to know him above all things times where others sleep is why others are awake lord my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua Ah ah Most of our visions and prophetic encounters started in the place of prayer not in the place of looking for power genuine search for god that's how we started receiving songs from the spirit genuine search for god help them please genuine power forged by the fires of his presence No TV, no radio, no nothing. No phones, but God. In the beginning, God. For someone, God is saying, I'm still waiting for you where you left me. You started with me, but your first invitation, they gave you an opportunity and you left me and you believe you are doing ministry. He said in the year that King Uzziah died, something must die for you to see God. Your pride must die. Your ambition must die. When you come to him, he takes away that which is alive in you and he becomes your only life. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the year my pride died. In the year my lust died. In the year flesh died, I saw the Lord. So the first in your season of preparation God gives you time there is a time frame to pursue God and to seek him sincerely and let me tell you the truth you cannot do all the socialization you want to do and find God 
I'm sorry I hate to be a bearer of bad news in economics there's something called opportunity cost is that true you have to make quality choices you have to discover the God of heaven Lord so this is how you are and let me tell you this the seed for finding God is time you will never truly encounter the God of the Bible if you cannot sow the seed of time don't give God five minutes two verses ten minutes prayer I want to have an encounter of someone who has dedicated himself literally become the sacrifice on the altar God is not unjust my dear people and let me tell you the truth the bankruptcy of the genuineness of your encounter will tell later in ministry it's true is the reason why today there are people who are weak very very weak they did not build capacity can I tell you this on campus you most likely don't have children you most likely are not married you most likely may not be the person shouldering your finances that time you have you will not have it again there are today ask any man of God to set aside time for God is a luxury you have to you have to go the extra mile to create certain things. He said, eat for the journey is far. For someone, this is a word for you. Instead of running around trying to announce yourself and say, you've not invited me. Thank God that nobody knows you yet. And stop wasting your time trying to make everybody know you. That is not the key to ministry. Just because you have advantage of internet and YouTube, you can shout your name and be surprised. If God does not say, hear ye him, you will waste your time. You see, this generation needs help. We need to redefine our priorities. Because we are used to celebrity living. All I need to do is just conjure something. Let people just know I'm there and that's it. When the devil finds out that you are determined to destroy yourself, you will be the one to open the door for you. Because it is knowing God that will help you to know which door is anointed and which door is not anointed, even if it is opened. Let's hurry up because of time. Number two, in the place of preparation, you not only discover God, you discover yourself. Exodus chapter 4. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1. One of the beauties of knowing God is that in finding God, you find yourself. Man was created in the image and the likeness of God. So the only way to really know yourself and to know your true worth is to know the God that created you. Our world today suffers grossly from identity crisis and it is a direct product of not knowing God. Are we together? It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we have been called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch this. Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say, The Lord had not appeared unto you. Are you seeing what he's saying now? They will believe you, but me, the vessel, there is a problem with me. They are not going to believe me. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, what is in your hand? And he said, a rod. We'll come there shortly. Verse 3. And he said, cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Look at God subjecting, subjecting Moses through several experiences. Verse 4. And the Lord said, put your hand and take it by yourself by the tail. You know what he was doing to him? I'll explain to you shortly. It became a rod in his hand, verse 5. It says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had appeared unto thee. Verse 6. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thy hand in thy bosom. And he put his hand, and when he took it back, it was as leprous as snow. Verse 7. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom. He plucked it out and behold, it turned like his flesh now. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, 
neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign now follow carefully verse 9 and it shall come to pass if they will not believe these two signs neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take water out of the river pour it upon dry land and the water which thou hast taken shall become blood we're reading to verse 12 there about I want to point out something for you and Moses said unto the Lord watch this now look at all the things God was doing to Moses remember God was saying Moses you do it participate in that process of the supernatural so that you will believe in yourself I want to do something with you so that that doubt and fear you have will dry up in his presence and Moses is still complaining oh my Lord I am not eloquent it is only when you know him that he will know you. Because if you don't know what God has made out of you, the devil will tell you many things about you. You mean it's you that God is going to send out of this family? You mean God does not have any other preacher that will come and carry you? But in the place of knowing God, he will reveal something to you about yourself that will give you confidence regardless. Moses said, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and is on, on of a slow tongue. Can you imagine this? So imagine Moses' mindset about himself. God is saying, I want to use you, and he's bringing everything. Oh, this you see God you want to send me I am not this I am not that I am not this verse 11 and the Lord said unto him who had made man's mouth in other words listen listen you're looking down on yourself is a mockery to my artistry and creativity I took time to create you and every time you look at yourself and say God you didn't try enough if only you added this to me I can be a better preacher Do you know what this means if Moses had been patient with God to believe everything God was telling him he would not need somebody to help be his mouthpiece I believe by this God had plans to heal him and correct him but Moses said well I believe this about you but this limitation and said fine since you do not believe I can solve this I will bring somebody to remedy it who had made man's mouth or who make it the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind have not I the Lord the Lord was challenging him verse 12 give us verse 12 now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say listen when you encounter God the next thing that happens is that you must discover yourself who am I what did God make out of my life? Let me tell you who you are. John 1, 6. These are the realities that you must find in your faith adventure. John 1, verse 6. Please help us, media. There was a man sent from God. Everybody, please shout this. Say, sent from God. One more time. Now mention your name and say, send from God. One more time. Let the devil hear it. Joshua Selman, send from God. Not a Yoruba person. Not an Igbo person. Not a Hausa person. That only defines the geography of your arrival. But he says there was a man. I am a man but that's not all about me I was sent from God it matters where I came from because he that cometh from above is above all that means knowing that I was sent from God already gives me the courage to know that every mountain that stands before me I know that I saw my my origin is an advantage Are we learning now listen let me tell you the truth we live in a world today that can bully you psychologically you will find yourself in the midst of people who may think they are richer than you 
wiser than you better than you as a man of God if you don't know who you are you cannot be a good pastor insecurity will make you destroy your people you will see people wealthier than you smarter than you you must be able to celebrate them without feeling intimidated because you have discovered that if not for anything as an advantage in your life you are sent from God someone prophesied say sent from God Apostle, you don't know my CGPA. I sympathize with you and we pray that it will rise. But in the interim, no matter what goes wrong, never forget this. Send from God. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? There is abundance that follows being sent. Not just abundance of money, abundance of grace. And God is able to make all grace So do not laugh at what I do not seem to have now. Remember, I am sent. Ah, carry that mentality. I am sent. I have only two members, but I am still sent. I know that I don't have a job yet. Ten years as a graduate, but I am sent. Listen, this is very simple. But this is how God delivered some of us from all kinds of complexes, regional complexes, whatever kinds of complexes. When he met Gideon in Judges chapter 5 and 6, he met a young man who had the destiny of a warrior and a deliverer, but he was hiding. And he said, oh, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon said, don't flatter me. I know where I come from, the least in my father's house and even the last born. Waiting for social media, or waiting for fans or waiting for individuals to tell you who you are is already a disaster on arrival they looked at jesus and called him a murderer they looked at jesus and said you lied that you would destroy the temple but he stood with confidence it is powerful to know who you are they said you are king of the jews and there was no pressure to defend himself some said they said you are this and that the only time he spoke was when pontius pilate said do you know i have the power to set you free said, ah you have gone too far uh -uh. no man can have anything except it is given it is within my power to call a legion of angels my silence is a strategy to regain dominion for the earth not weakness don't confuse my silence for weakness i know who i am can I tell you the truth? When you know who you are as a man of God and as a great man, you will know when to be silent over needless battles. And you may be perceived as weak, but you stand as strong because you know who you are. If someone looks at you and says, is it not your useless father? I remember you. You come from Ibadan. You come from this place. I hope you know that your family, where you come from, people don't rise and last. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And you don't need to insult them. They are speaking their truth but your truth which is the truth according to scripture is that you are a man sent from God regardless the family I came through sent from God the womb of your mother only gave your spirit a body frame but believe me if you stay with God and he convinces you that you are sent from God then he can take you to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1, please, and verse 5. Am I wasting your time? This was the Lord God of heaven speaking to a young boy who would later became, be, become a great mighty prophet. But as a little boy, he was giving him a little history. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, God knows you, but do you know yourself? And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Verse 6, here was the lamentation of an ignorant boy. He said, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. Why? For I am a rebuke coming, comes in immediately. Verse 7, the Lord takes the time to rebuke him immediately. He said, say not, I am a child. Say not, 
I am a Nigerian. Say not, I am weak. Say not, I am a female. Say not, I am disadvantaged. Say not, I can't speak English very well. Say not, I am last born. Say not, I am an orphan. If you really want to know who you are, there are some say nots. You must know what to say and you must know what to not say. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. Because in this kingdom, whatever you declare, whatever you name, that is what it becomes. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Are we together? God never called the people grasshoppers. Satan never called the people grasshoppers. They called themselves they say we were like grasshoppers. Sent from God. Let's rush to number three very quickly. We're still in the season of preparation. Oh, five things. Number one, you must discover God. Number two, you must discover yourself. Number three, for sake of time, you must discover your giftings and abilities. This one, this is one of the advantages of the pursuit of God in the place of preparation, especially through service. Service in the house of God. Many people on campus did not even know they were going to be ministers. It was as they served. They discovered, so I can sing. Okay, there's an opportunity to go to the worship team. From there, some of them today are leading nations in worship. You must discover your giftings and potentials because those are the tools that God will use to bless the nations through you. Exodus chapter 4. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll jump to verse 17. Exodus chapter 4. Let's hurry up please. He says, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in your hands? And he said, A rod. Please look up. Do not begin your journey of destiny if you do not know what is in your hands God will never send you unless he reveals to you what you are carrying verse 17 Moses called what was in his hand a rod a gift an ability to sing I can just talk well and people listen to me and when he submitted that rod listen carefully there's no time I would have shown you how the rod is converted from just a rod to a rod that does signs and wonders. The first thing Moses did with that rod is that he surrendered that rod before the presence of God. If you cannot lay down your rod to serve God, it cannot become a rod that does signs and wonders. It will remain a rod. There are many people who have the gift of singing, leadership, and it stops there. Nothing supernatural, no, nothing extraordinary. The touch of his presence has not come upon it. Can I tell you, next time you go to worship God, carry everything that is an advantage and worship him too. Don't worship him and your gift stand aside. Carry the gift, let the gift worship him. Let your wisdom worship him. Let your beauty worship him. Everything that is an advantage in your life is that rod that will be used. Verse 17. Thou shalt take this singing ability thou shalt take this grace to preach thou shalt take this intellectual prowess thou shalt take this grace for media thou shalt take this ability thou shalt take your first class your two one whatever it is wherewith that means every time there is a need for signs and wonders don't just be crying up and down remember the rod Every time a generation ignores you, God will say, remember when we were praying and fasting, where is that ability to prophesy that I gave you? Now is the time to bring it out. That is the rod of God in your hand. We're going to pray. I just saw light like eight people. I saw the anointing coming on them now. Please help them eight of you i just saw light coming upon you please help them we'll have some time to pray but i need you to get this 
in the name of Jesus that grace there is a betting of something within your spirit man just pray in the spirit in one minute ah there is a rod of God in your hand you may look like you are ordinary you are not just an usher you are not just a worshiper you are not just a campus president you may start serving tables but there is grace upon you please sit down please sit down just help those under the anointing everybody say a rod can i tell you anybody who tells you he was sent by god tell him show me the rod that he gave you your rod is what decides your relevance when you stand before pharaoh ah. moses what do you have in your hand an ordinary ability to do good designs what do you have i found out that there's an unusual grace every class i go to i'm a class monitor everywhere i go i am a leader but is it really something do not make the mistake of the wife of the prophet who said i have nothing except everything all refined looks small a rod hear me there are people who are too big to bring their gifts and serve in the house of god there are many people who began to serve god with sincerity of heart they never knew they would be preachers they didn't even know the fellowships would be handed over to them or one day they will become head of this there are people who learn leadership while they serve they learn discipline while they serve they became prayer warriors while they serve some of them were not even born again when they came on campus but service listen if you have found your rod it's time to throw that rod before his feet and to say rod you will join me in serving him i don't know what to do with you but let his presence give definition everything david had he used it to become a mighty man his ability to sing he used it to write songs his ability as a warrior he brought victory for israel please don't forget this teaching tonight there are some of you who are saying apostle god anointed the great people but there is nothing about me the only thing about me is that i am beautiful ask esther ask esther how beauty can take someone to a palace and give her the leverage to deliver god's people from the wickedness and the plot of her man hear me everything god has given you however it cannot serve the nations if it does not serve god first the first person the rod served was not israel the first person the rod served was god he threw it god said if you believe in me throw that rod at my presence and moses I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Hear me. Let me give you an assignment tonight. When you go back home, go and write down everything that constitutes an advantage in your life. While you are writing it, the devil will be saying you are joking, write it. If you are beautiful, write it. You are handsome, write it. You are intelligent, write it an unusual grace to speak write it everything that is an advantage you are writing your rods these are the rods that god will use to do mighty things leadership ability write it you found out there is a prophetic grace within you don't let anybody despise you refined or not just write it you are a prophetic worshiper every time you lift up that voice something happens write it down 
Hear me, listen. Let me teach you what you are doing. The mystery of what you will be doing is found in Philemon 1 verse 6. It says that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You must acknowledge every good thing. You have acknowledged all the bad things that are in you. That the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. Sit down, let's make progress. So the season of preparation affords you the opportunity to number one, to know God, to discover God. Number two, to know yourself. Number three, to find that rod in your hand, your giftings and your ability. Number four, very quickly, you discover and receive your assignment during these periods of preparation. The assignment that will represent the mandate of your life comes during the period of preparation. Assignments can be discovered and assignments can be received. Assignments can be discovered. If you are David, you may not receive your assignment. You may discover it as you are taking food. David, write it for reference. We may not have the time to read. As we see in the life of David, 1 Samuel chapter 17, when you read from verse 17 to 52, David was sent to go and give his brothers food because they were in the battleground. That was when he went and he saw this beast roaring. And he said, what is the meaning of this? The nation of Israel were all scared, including King Saul. And he said, listen, I am able to take this guy. They said, who brought this stupid boy to the battlefield now? And he said, no, 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 no. Don't mock me. I have discovered the rod in my hand. While I was in the wilderness, I was not just tending sheep. I, I went to tend sheep, but in tending sheep, I discovered I had the ability to kill anything and listen to me. If you allow me, use my rod. When he used that rod, he brought Goliath down and that began the journey that would end up leading him to become the king of Israel. Can I tell you this? You must trust God for grace to find your place in destiny. Stop saying people don't like me. Nobody is pursuing me. Nobody will look for you for nothing until you find your place. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.